Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the circuit simulation portion of Easy Ada. We are going to start out with a really simple circuit, and then I'm going to show you how to run this 4-bit calculator and an A-stable multivibrator. I also uploaded these two projects onto the Easy Ada website, so if you want to, you can download them and run them yourself. As you probably know, we are working on building a 4-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we are going to build artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing you do is go to easyada.com. Once you're here, this is what it should look like. Under products, we have a professional online editor, a standard online editor, and a desktop client. The professional online editor is only for making printed circuit boards. So for the circuit simulator, it's only available using the standard online editor. So this is where we wanna be. You can download it onto your computer and then run it from your computer, but today we're just going to be running it in the web browser and then it is going to be saved on the server. So we click standard online editor. And right now we are in standard mode, which is not simulation mode. So you can see right here, we're in standard mode. So we click change to simulation mode. And now you can see we are in simulation mode. And now we'll go file new project and we will just call this example one and we will click save. And this is what a new project will look like, but I actually don't like this color scheme. So the first thing I always do is change the theme colors by going to view theme and I change it to black on white. And then this grid is actually really nice, but just for making this video, I'm going to turn the grid off by just clicking grid not be visible. And if you look over here, you can see all the projects. You can see all projects. I actually have 80 projects here. So this is the circuit simulator that I've been using for most of my videos. And now let's just draw a simple circuit. So the first thing we're going to do is add a voltage source. So you left click the voltage source and then you left click to drop it. And then you click escape so that you can click a new part. So the next thing we want is a resistor. So left click the resistor and then left click to drop it, hit escape. And then the next thing we're gonna do is add an LED. So we'll click LED, but it's not in the orientation that we want. So we just click space bar, space bar, space bar. And now we can drop this LED on there. And the last thing we need is our ground. So we'll click ground and we'll left click here and then we'll hit escape. And then we need a wire. So our wiring tools are over here on the right side. We will click wire and then we will run a wire around the circuit. So here we go. We can just go right through the part and it'll connect both sides properly. We'll do the same thing here. And now we are all wired up. We'll hit escape. And we should be able to center this up if we want to just by dragging it over. And now this circuit is actually ready to run. We can click the scroll button on our mouse to actually zoom in. And now we will click run by hitting this play button. All right, so we can see nothing happened and that's because we didn't check our values. So let's go through and check our values. So the LED, we want a red one, which is correct. Our resistor, we want a 1K resistor, which we could change right here, but 1K is good. But the problem was our voltage source. So we actually have to change this to a five volt voltage source. And now if we click play, it will work. All right, so now we can see that the LED actually turned on. And this is something that is kind of unique to Easy Ada, where this LED will actually show a different color whenever it's on, whenever you run the simulation. And you'll see down here that this popped up, and what this is saying is how long the simulation's running for. So this is a transient simulation, and it's running for 10 milliseconds. We can change that by just double clicking it, and we will just change it to one second. So if you just do tran one, that will be a one second runtime. And it'll work in either case for this particular circuit, but sometimes this does matter. And one thing that is kind of weird about this LED is if I were to change this resistor value to 2K and then I click run, do you guys think it'll work? In real life, it should work, but I don't think it's going to work in this case, but we shall see. Yep, and you can see that the LED actually shut off. So this LED would definitely be lit, but the parameters for this LED are such that I guess if there's not enough current flowing across the LED, it just says that it's off. I'm not exactly sure what that threshold is, but we will turn this back to a 1K resistor so that it will work. And then let's add a multimeter. We'll add a multimeter here and here to measure the voltage drop across the resistor and across the LED. 
So we'll just connect this with the wiring tool and then we'll do the same thing over here. All right, now we will click play. All right, so we can see that the voltage drop across this resistor is 3.322 volts and the voltage drop across this LED is 1.678 volts. So if you add these two together, it should be five volts and everything seems to be working properly. Now let's say we wanted to measure current. We can click our multimeter and we can switch to the ammeter, which should measure the current. But what's gonna happen if we run this right now? We'll click run and we can see that there was a big problem. So we actually have 55 amps now running through our circuit. So this means that our LED is going to be broke and our multimeter is going to be broke because this is not how you measure current. So right now the current's going to not go across this resistor, but rather it's going to run through the multimeter and then through the LED, which is basically a short circuit because we don't have any resistor in the loop. So the proper way to hook this up is to actually have it run through the circuit. So now the current is going to run through the multimeter and across the resistor. So this should give us the proper value. Yep, so now we can see that the current running through the circuit is 3.322 milliamps. So this was a really simple circuit to show the basics to how to run a simulation in Easy Ada, but now let's look at a larger circuit. All right, so now I opened up the 4-bit calculator project and you can see that we actually have a, a larger circuit here. It's built with a whole bunch of transistors, resistors, LEDs, and this is actually four full adders. And then we have a four bit input plus a four bit input equals a five bit output. And I actually have two other videos showing how these four bit calculators work, but we'll just run through a simple example here. So we'll add two plus two. So this value right here is two. So we'll close this switch. And then this value right here is two. So we'll close this switch and we will click run. All right, so that worked. So we can see that we have two plus two equals four. Now let's do one plus one equals two. So we'll close our one and then we'll open our two and we will close our one. And let's see if this works. Click run. Yep, and now we can see one plus one equals two. This time let's do eight plus eight. And now we can see our values change. So we have eight plus eight equals 16. Now let's turn on all the inputs and see what happens. All right, now all of the switches are closed. Let's see what happens. We have, this should be 15 plus 15 should equal 30. And it does. So we have 15 plus 15 equals, this is 30. So it's 16 plus eight plus four plus two. And that pretty much shows that this calculator is working properly. All right, the next circuit we are going to look at is this A-stable multi-vibrator. And the first thing you wanna see is we actually do have our simulation runtime at 10 seconds. So let's run this and see what happens. We click run. And we can see that these LEDs are actually going back and forth, which is what you would expect for this A-stable multivibrator. And we can actually view the output here. So we can view the meter. So this is the output and this is the inverse of the output. So you can see anytime the output goes high, the inverse of the output goes low. And you can actually see the waveform right here on this logic analyzer. So to open up a logic analyzer, it would just be in the library under logic analyzer. You would just add it. And you can see that by default, the clock rate is 1K and the voltage threshold is 2.5 volts. We did change this. So the clock rate has been changed to one second and then the voltage threshold has been changed to 0.5 volts. The next thing we can do is we can actually swap out this logic analyzer with an oscilloscope. So let's do that. We'll actually drop an oscilloscope here and then we will wire that up. All right, now the oscilloscope is wired up. Let's click the meter to see the settings. And right here, we actually have the time base set to one second per division. Channel A is one volt per division. Channel B is one volt per division. And then the Y position of channel B is at negative three. And I actually already ran this so we can see the output here. And we can see that this is the output of the circuit. And then this is the inverse of the output. And right here it says channel A, it shows the voltage. And then channel B, it shows the voltage. And we can see that it is oscillating between 1.678 volts and zero volts. So this is probably a little bit of a nicer output than the logic analyzer, but either one of them shows the general idea of what is going on. 
Another thing I wanted to show you is if while you're on easyada.com on the home page, if you click this explore button, it takes you to an extension of the website. And on here, you can actually see a bunch of open source projects. And if you actually use the search bar right here, you can actually see that I actually uploaded these as open source projects. So I actually put them in the public domain. So we can see here, we do four bit calculator. You can see right here, here it is. You can just click it and you can open it up. So if while you're right here, if you click open an editor, you will be able to run the simulation yourself. And then we can go back and we can do the same thing for the A stable multi vibrator. For this one, I don't show up right away. I actually saved it as A stable multi vibrator GSN for the Global Science Network. And then if you click search, it should be the first one. So you can see right there it is, you can click it. And again, you can see I put it in the public domain. And if you click down here, you can open it in the editor and then you will be able to run the simulation yourself. And it should work properly. One other thing that I wanted to mention is all of these projects are actually saved on a server. So they're not actually saved on your computer. If you wanna save them onto your computer, you can go under advanced and then you can go to backup project. And then here you can click all of the ones that you want to back up and then you can just click download. Okay, so that's what we want. Download successful and then it's just a zip file right here and you can click it and it will download. In the next video, we are going to build an A-stable multivibrator within LT Spice, which is another free circuit simulator. And we will compare those results with what we got using Easy Ada. We will also compare the results to what we measure on the oscilloscope. So if you want to watch that video, click right here.